thick tendrils, tangle supports, moisture mayhem, or material misfire. Flawless foundations, but the finish falls flat. Sparking starts with select spools. Is the printer peril provoked by the polymer? All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 211. Let's get into it. Starting off wondering what is happening. The filament should be dry that they're testing. They have no idea how this could be happening. We can see that it's just long strands of filament coming off the supports. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any photos of the actual part itself. And that would actually be pretty useful here. But if we take a look a little closer, we can see that, well, it's not retracting, or at least it doesn't appear to be retracting at all. You would suspect that moisture in the filament would create some level of stringing. This is not stringing, and in fact is much more common for what we would see on the old school hairy lions that people used to print. We've done some here around the shop, and of course many of you might have as well, where it does a bridge out to an outer cylinder, where you then cut that cylinder away, use a heat gun to melt the hair back, and it makes for, you know, a, a line with an interesting hairdo. That is exactly what we're seeing here. This would occur when the machine thinks that there's some sort of bridging going on, or that for some reason, instead of retracting, it's de-retracting when it is moving. The first thing I would check is to make sure that the print file itself is actually clean and there's nothing wrong with it. If your print file has any damage to it, say it's corrupted, maybe the G code's messed up, maybe the STL file needs to be repaired, you could see the machine trying to fill in those holes or dealing with bad code by just drawing straight lines. This, though, is not from wet filament. We can see the material itself looks fine. It might be white filament, which I really don't like, but it looks okay. All we see are these thick strands. Those strands appear to be the exact size of an extrusion from the hot end itself. This could also be caused by extreme back pressure, but given that this is a Bamboo Lab A1, a machine that has well-tuned profiles from the factory and well-tuned profiles in pretty much every slicer available on the market, there's no real reason that this should be happening. My best guess is going to be it is a bad file, but I'd like to know from you all, what do you think here? Yeah, it could be they have the retraction set at a negative number, and so as the machine is moving, it's just extruding filament, but it just, it looks too consistent, and honestly, it looks too good. Now, thankfully, this is just on supports, so, or at least we can only see it on supports, so just cut off and you're fine. No big deal. But to really determine what is exactly going on with the part, we want to look at the file itself, see how it's creating the support, and check the actual G code, and check the sliced file, the one that you put on the micro SD card, or the one that you're sending through the cloud, to make sure that that is there. If it's not, we've got other issues to look at, but I'm going to guess it is all file based. Let me know your thoughts. And hey, while you're typing that up, my name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And if you've been dealing with printer problems, make sure to reach out to us on all the social medias. And the best way to do it is to film a video of what's going on with your machine and tag us in that description. We'll get notified of it. We can show that video and, you know, a little bit more information than photos. We would love to help you out. So if you are dealing with issues, just reach out to us doesn't cost a dime to get some assistance because we certainly don't want prints that well are hairy where they shouldn't be we want prints look like that, that that's a good looking print back there we'll show you that at the end of the episode so make sure you stay tuned and hey while you're down there don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed but moving on to uh well i don't know any better way to put it so if only my tops could look like my bottoms look we have links to every single fail that we cover in the description so if you want to see the absolute ridiculousness that is the comment section for this go and enjoy we can see here the bottom of the print looks honestly perfect the top side though absolutely over extruded traditionally when we see something like this we would say wait a minute it's probably warped but i don't see any evidence of warping on this part at all all. Traditionally, what's happening here is you are over extruding. The best thing to look at is your steps per millimeter. Grab some filament that you can mark on. So white filament is often the easiest for this. I want you to insert it, get it purged out through the hot end. Then from the entrance to the extruder, 100 millimeters up, 
mark a line, tell the machine to extrude 100 millimeters and see what happens. You can do this with 50, with 25, with any number technically, but 100 is easy and gives you plenty of time to determine did it go too far or did it not go far enough? In this case, we would guess that it is going too far. And because we don't see any lines on this first layer, I would bet that that first layer has got ridges. Remember, if your ruffles have ridges, you are either too close to the bed or you are over extruding. Ruffles have ridges. Now this part is very thin, so it being a little bit too close on the bed side of things could impact that top layer, especially on hyper thin parts like we see. So I would make sure that first layer looks and feels like glass. On textured build plates, this isn't that much of an issue because it's difficult to get a first layer look like glass when your bed material is rough on its own. But this bed appears to be smooth or smooth enough. It is not a really rough PEI surface that we're used to on other machines. So we have to assume that this is like a smooth PEI sheet or something like that. The over extruding thing is much easier to check, especially when you already have a print done. But keep an eye out on the next print that you do and see, does that first layer have ridges in it? If it does, you're too close. If you have valleys in between your lines, you're too far, you gotta bring that nozzle closer to the build plate. Because the Cobra 3 is a Cartesian printer, it has two lead screws that run the Z-axis. If those are off a little bit and it can bind as it goes up, one side might go up where the other side doesn't move at all. And you might be asking yourself, Grant, why would you think that could be an issue? Well, if we look, the issue is not anywhere near as bad here on the right side as it is on the left side, and it gets progressively worse as we go toward the left side. That would tell me that we have an unevenness to our x-axis. These are all things that are easy to check, easy to fix, and if your Cobra 3 for some reason only has one lead screw, I, I honestly don't know if they came with one or two, then make sure the V-wheels are tight, they're not wiggling too much, and that all the bolts that hold this machine together are not loose. Backlash can be created by anything that's loose. Make sure it's tight where it can be. Next up, we got an Ender 3 that is shaking so much, you might call it Andre 3000, where he's telling you to inaccurately shake it like a Polaroid picture. Because you shouldn't shake Polaroid pictures. It's not necessary. Anyways, let's see what's going on here. Oh, yeah. Bud. Where are the screws holding your bed in? It's an Ender 3. We should see wheels. We, we should see something. That whole bed is loose on the carriage. Really, really loose. I watch this. I, seriously. Normally, I, I'd make a joke about how much it's jiggling, but realistically, there is no appropriate joke that I could make, so I will let you all make them down in those comments below. But I agree with the top comment here saying the fact that you're getting anything remotely resembling a functional print on this is genuinely amazing. I agree. There are so many screws up in my head loose that you might think my name was Marshall Mathers. It's not. It's crazy. <laughs> But you're going to want to go through and check the carriage. Check to make sure the V-wheels themselves are tight against the rails they ride on. Make sure that if there are springs and thumb screws that hold the bed to the carriage, which I'm barely certain there are, that you find them because it looks like they're not there. And the whole thing is wobbling like crazy. But this is why we talk about making sure that your machines are maintained. This is a relatively easy thing to do with. Just find loose things and make them less loose. It's not that difficult. But it can add up to being problems over and over again if you don't regularly at least check to make sure, especially on printers with V-wheels, that the V-wheels are reasonably tight we did an entire video on this we'll card to it so you can take a look have you ever seen a machine get this bad i'd like to know i have but it's because i did it on purpose but otherwise we have never seen it get to the point that it's wobbling so much it looks like oobleck on a subwoofer and last but not least let's just watch this one together do you notice the thing do, 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 do you notice the sparking? This is a Vision Miner 22 IDEX, a very expensive independent dual extruder, so IDEX, 
3D printer that is basically designed to print high temp materials like PEEK, PEC, Ultem, and in this case, carbon fiber nylon. This is due, in my opinion, to static and or the conductivity of the carbon fiber. And we can see the user here says that this happens on other machines as well. Yeah, it's static built up from the carbon fiber dragging through the nozzle and then creating a static discharge. But thankfully, the system is grounded, so they don't have to worry too much. But it is something that, uh, yeah, certainly if I saw my 3D printer sparking, especially at the nozzle, I might be a little concerned. Now, this, this isn't a Bamboo A1, so I have reasonable faith that Vision Miner understands what's going on. I've never seen filament spark like this. And I don't know if it's because of the way the 22 IDEX does its bed leveling procedures. There's got to be some reason. We've ran carbon fiber nylon through tons of different machines before, and I'm a sucker for watching the first layer, or carbon fiber prints in general. But we know that the carbon fiber in the filament makes it conductive. It's not very conductive, it's mildly conductive, but it's certainly conductive enough that if you get quite a few thousand volts built up of static, it can discharge through the outlet of the filament. I don't believe there's a way to fix it. And if it's happening on two different machines, then I'm going to point my finger toward the material and not the machine, especially because we have GD plus fours. They don't use any nozzle probing. They use an inductive sensor. That's how they get their bed level. It's not like they're relying on the nozzle to boop the build plate and create a circuit. And it's not like it's relying on a load cell either. Now, the 22 IDEX is not a machine that we have in the shop. We would love to get one showing off high-end technology and what it's capable of is a huge thing that we love to do here and in fact you guys are going to be seeing some really awesome stuff coming out of the channel as we take a trip to a country that i've never been to before and we get to show you some things that you have likely never seen and if you want to see some amazing new technology make sure to leave a like and get subscribed because I think you're going to like it. But the 22 IDEX is kind of at the top end of the high-end prosumer market and low-end industrial to medium industrial range. And we can see that their temperatures are well beyond what you would expect from regular 3D printers because, yeah, it's an industrial class machine. Nozzle at 350, bed at 160 Celsius, and chamber at 100 Celsius. Very, very hot machines. So I believe a combination of the heat, of the static, and of the conductivity of the filament is causing this. I would say the best thing you could do here is reach out to Vision Miner to make sure this is expected. I don't see it being a huge issue overall, but we would absolutely recommend checking that nozzle periodically because those static discharges can cause damage to the nozzle. You're effectively burning tiny little dots of material off of the nozzle something to keep in mind. But would you guys like to see more high-end machines here on the channel? Some of you know this, but I know a lot of you don't, but I have a background in running high-end 3D printers, machines that cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. While I'm certainly not the best at wiring machines from the factory, industrial-grade machines don't require you to do that kind of work, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> But I'd love to know from you if you think this is going to cause any issues. Have you seen this on machines in your shop before? We have GD plus fours. We've ran carbon fiber nylon through them. Maybe I'm just not paying enough attention. Even though we technically don't know how to solve this problem, I think it's unique enough to show you all and see what you think is going on and how you might solve it. The cool thing about the internet, we can do those kinds of things. Just like we can do the kind of things by showing you the awesome names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher member. If you want to support the efforts that we do here and get access to our private Discord server, you can join at the $10 tier and higher. Thank you to all of you that make these videos possible, as well as trips like 3D Printopia coming up this weekend. In fact, as this video airs, we are already in Maryland. If you want to come say hi to us, hang out, get signatures, whatever, come find us at 3D Printopia. We will be there filming all weekend. Come check us out. Come say hey, get some photos, whatever. We always like talking to fans. Don't be afraid. I probably won't bite. I'm a Florida man. It's never a 0% chance. And oh yeah, because I said I would show this to you and I'm definitely not starting the recording again because I totally forgot to actually show this. We made some upgrades recently. We, we picked up a uh, Atomos Ninja 5 uh, field recorder, TPU 3D printed screen protector, of course, with that beautiful Ember Prototypes plate and an adapter on the back that fits standard size 
SSDs rather than the really expensive ones that Atomo sells you. Very cool use of 3D printing. This is a uh, Polar Filaments 60D TPU, so it's nice and flexible, but holds its shape quite well. And this here is some really, really old Prusa, not Prusa Mint. Back when Prusa was having somebody else make their filament, uh, this is some of their Prusa Orange from 2017. So still prints perfectly as long as it's dried. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Editor Rob, I want to see how you decide to spell that, but you probably know how to spell Ublek. Ha, 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 ha.